Hello everybody and welcome. Today we are checking out Dungeons and Dragons Online. This is a game that I've been wanting to check out for quite a while now. An MMO that released in 2006 I believe and then it came to Steam about 2012. Uh, the game is still going pretty strong apparently and uh, it's also created by the same people that made the Lord of the Rings Online game um, which is another one I've wanted to play. So today, I think I know what class I'm going to make, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but we're going to see how this goes because, man, this game has a lot. I've been trying to do a little bit of research on it to see where to start. Uh, and I just, just got to the point where I said, you know what? I'm just going to create a class, something that looks cool, go into it, and take it from there. So that's what we're going to do. Now, I do believe I'm gonna go Druid here, uh, but just, since this is my first video ever on Dungeons and Dragons Online, I figured I'd do a quick kind of showcase of the classes that they have. Um, so when you do load in and create a new character, it asks you melee, spell, specialist, or iconic. Iconic are kind of like standard or people or special characters. Um, that you need to buy to be able to play. And by the way, right now I'm going 100% free to play. I haven't purchased anything. They have a ton of stuff in the store, but I wanna kinda see how it is, feel it out before I even think about purchasing anything. So uh, for melee, they do have fighter, barbarian, paladin, and monk, uh, each with their own, of course, melee specialty, I guess you could say spell they do have sorcerer cleric wizard favored soul which i'm not 100 percent sure what that is wielding divine magic okay and druid which is i think that's what i'll be going today and then warlock um then for specialist we have ranger rogue bard uh, Artificer, which this one looks really cool. Honestly, I think I would go Artificer, but right now uh, you'd have to buy it. So I'm going to hold off on that, but I do think it looks really interesting. The steampunk look to it, and then it looks like you also get a uh, pet for it, which is pretty cool. And then of course, you have Alchemist as well. And then just to kind of showcase it real quick too, um, even though I kind of showed it for a second, the iconic classes... You have Shadar Kal, Purple Dragon, Morning Lord, Blade Forged Paladin. That looks sick, actually. <laughs> that looks pretty sick. A Deep Gnome, Asimar Scourge, Deepling Scoundrel, Razor Claw Shifter, and Tabaxi Trailblazer. I might butcher that, but yeah um so yeah we're gonna go into spell and i've made my decision uh i'm gonna test out druid for the first time around we'll see how it goes and now some classes when you select the path uh they go style class path race and then look um some classes they have preset paths that will show up right here i guess for the druid it only has customize so we're gonna go ahead and do customize We'll hit next. Now here's all the races. Uh, Asimar, or Asimar, Dragonborn, Drow Elf, Dwarf, Elf Kovari, Elf Wood, Gnome, Halfling, Half Elf, Half Orc, Human, Tabaxi, uh, Tiefling, Shifter and Warforged. Um, I think each of these kind of have like their own like stat to it, too, or something that is like generally good or better for them. Yeah, proficient. You can kind of see if you click on the stats by default, it's on general. There's more info, tells you what they're good at for that class, and then there's also a stats page. So I think from everything I've read. Generally, humans are good for possibly every class. 
So I'm going to keep it basic. I'm going to go human. I know everybody goes human, but it's my first class. We can always change things down the line if I create a new character. So we'll see. But um, I did kind of run through this a little bit before I created a character just to get like a little bit of a better understanding. So when you're at this screen here, it tells you your abilities for the class that you're playing. Uh, wisdom, it determines how powerful a, a spell a druid can cast and how many bonus spell points he receives and how hard those spells are able to or the spells are to resist. Strength is an important combat. Uh, character will score a hit and the amount of damage, high constitution for hit points, health, and high dexterity for uh, the ability to avoid attacks. Now you get 28 points to start, so I think we're going to go with Wisdom at first. We're going to try to bump that up as much as I can. And one second, guys, my dog is uh, crying a little bit. My wife's not home at the moment, so she's uh, been a little baby recently, but that's okay. Put some points into Strength as well. Uh, we'll go high constitution because I have no idea how I'm going to do with health, health wise. Now I know some of these can like max out. Yeah. 18 is maxed out. Uh, then it looks like dexterity increases the druid's ability to avoid attacks. We'll put two points into that. And I think that should be good. It also gives you like a little description about each of these wisdom effects will save spells casting ability for clerics druids paladins and rangers and key regeneration for monks and i think that looks just about as good as we can get it right now now assign your skill points okay this is where it's going to get a little bit hazy for myself but hey uh we're gonna try our best and like i said first character don't really know what i'm doing but uh, if you guys has if anybody has played the game before and you are watching this let's play definitely let me know any comments or suggestions you have for whether it's class or for the class that I'm playing really anything uh, because there's a lot to this and it's a lot for a new player but it is something that I've been wanting to try like I said in the beginning so that's why we're here um, the Druid class includes Concentration, Diplomacy, Heal, Intimidate, Listen, Spellcraft, Spot, and Swim. Concentration lets the Druid cast spells, including healing spells. Uh, healing spells even when he's being attacked. So I'm going to put some points into Concentration then. Put two into that. Spellcraft increases the damage of most of your offensive spells. Okay, so Spellcraft is right here. I'm going to put a good amount. We can, it looks like it maxes out at four. Intimidate can be useful for druids in bear form. Allows the druid to attract the attention of enemies. Okay, so that's kind of like a tank. Uh, diplomacy can be useful in combat since it lets the druid convince foes to seek out other targets and when dealing with NPCs. Diplomacy, let's try to bump that up like two points. The bluff is not a class skill, but might be worthwhile for a druid lands on spending a lot of time in wolf form because it allows the druid to divert the enemy's attention leaving it open for flanking attacks skills such as spot and listen combine well with the druid's high wisdom score so let's put like two into bluff then or maybe one and then spot and listen i do have high wisdom so I'll put some into high uh, spot. There's that. And what's the next one? Listen. Where did that go? There it is. There's the remainder. Okay. Um, skills help a character survive in the tough environments. I'm guessing that's what that is of Eberron. Invest your points in areas you want to excel in and you can adventure... Uh, you can adventure with other players whose skill complete complement your own. Okay, I see. And yeah, yeah. Um, one thing when I was kind of like looking over this for the first time, 
apparently if you hover over these it does give you a little bit more of a description concentration allows you to allows a chance to continue casting a spell when you would normally be interrupted by taking damage for characters with key concentration allows you to retain more key and slow okay uh now the ones i just put points into that's the ones i want to be allows you to hear enemies that are trying to move silently as well as subtle noises which others may not hear that is inter i'm really curious how that's going to work in a gameplay aspect but it's here for a reason right and that does suggest it so i'm hoping that that is correct but i guess we'll see uh spellcraft improves your spell damage that's kind of you know that kind of is explain uh, explains itself, I guess you could say. Spot allows you to sense the presence of nearby hidden doors, traps, and objects, and, and to spot enemies that are trying to hide. Okay. I see that can be useful. And Bluff allows you to bluff certain NPCs, draw monsters. So with some of these, I, I, it really makes me wonder if there's going to be like dialogue options, but I have no idea. So... I think if we click next here, it'll put us into. Never mind. <laughs> so now we pick our feats. Drag and drop from the available feats to my feats. Try to uh, pick feats that complement the feats and abilities your character already has. For Druid, common feat choices related to your class abilities include mental toughness, weapon focus, bludgeoning, and toughness. So, Druid, you're also able. Uh, capable warrior and you may consider feats such as toughness power attack combat expertise or dodge meta magic feels like empower spell or extended spell or extend spell so uh oh boy <laughs> holy oh my god there's a lot in here uh augment summoning your summons creature charm spell casting features wait would this even be worth prerequisites feet human bonus feet feats you already have attack Dismiss Charm, Heroic Durability, Revive Wolf Companion, Maul, Proficiency. Okay, so these are like additional. So if I was like not proficient in Dagger, I could, I'm guessing, go in here and select like Proficient Dagger. Like one of these. Okay, it doesn't even show up, I guess. As martial art. Oh, wait, that's martial artist weapon. Uh, maybe. Skill focus. Okay, so what is my common mental toughness? Mental toughness. Meta magic, stunning blow. Adds your charisma modifier to your will saves instead of your wisdom. Okay. I mean, I see toughness right here. Adds increase your hit points by plus three at the first level and one plus one for each additional level. Might be worth getting. Weapon focus, bludgeoning. Uh, skill feats. Really is a lot. Spell focus. Necromancy. Wait, so is this saying like I could focus in necromancy while being uh whatever like one of these? Um a druid? Is that like what it's saying? Your spells from necromancy school of magic are harder to resist. Well, I don't think so because I don't even have any, right? Uh, mental tough toughness, weapon focus, bludgeoning. Do I even have that? Proficiency. 
magical training takedown. Augment summoning your summoning creature. Uh, charm minions, pets have plus four to all ability scores, increased health, and increased fortification. And I put that as a second one because I can summon a uh, wolf, right? Yeah. Summon nature's ally spell of that level. Let's try that. And then mental toughness, what is this? Increase your maximum spell point by 10 at first level and 5 points for each additional level. Also increase your spell critical chance by 1. Sure. I guess I'll take that. Mental toughness, weapon focus, bludgeoning, and toughness. Where I haven't seen... I see skill focus. Proficiency. Where is that saying, like... It doesn't even say bludgeoning right there. Martial artist. Least dragon mark of finding. Maybe I should just take uh, toughness instead of augment summoning. For summon creatures, charmed minions, pets, and hirelings. Have plus four to ability scores. Uh, I feel like I should follow this instead of that, but I don't know. I don't. I'm gonna take toughness because it, it. I mean, at the end of the day, it will give me more health, right? So, and since we're a human, we get a bonus feat, which I guess is pretty good. Um, I don't know if you get more of these later on down the line, but that might be a thing too. Review your spells. Oh my gosh. Okay, you don't have any choices to make. Uh, you have the ability to cast all level one spells. Lesser Vigor is useful for any druid, allowing you to heal damage suffered by both yourself and your party members. Entangled. So I'm glad that it gives you like a, actually an explanation on this side of the screen. That's, that's definitely going to be very useful. Um, for creating a character for anybody else that's new, kind of like me. You've been granted 15 spells at this level. Jump and tangle. Okay, take down. Entangle will dramatically slow enemies in an area while produce flame can be used and can be used to damage. I think there's some typos in here. <laughs> At first level, you'll be restricted to casting only three spells at a time, and you must prepare them in advance at a tavern or rest shrine. One of these will always be Summon Nature, Nature's Ally 1. I think that's the summon. Summon one of two different creatures, a gray wolf or a brown rat. Uh, once you've selected your spells, you can cast them as often as you'd like until you run out of spell point. Okay. Oh boy, the summary. Your character will have the following stats, skills, abilities, and feats. Click back to go back to change something. Click next to continue. Okay. Well, uh, I think that's a good breakdown. I guess just in case if anybody's watching that knows about the game and there's things I shouldn't have or should have in here, feel free to let me know. Uh, but let's hit next. Now, to the fun part. Character customization. Uh, let's see what we got. I mean, not that uh, selecting our abilities and stuff like that isn't fun. But it's definitely a lot, I mean, for a new character, a new person playing. Um, some people would probably maybe say that selecting a different class would have been better. But I don't know. Like I said, it looked cool. And I guess we'll see. So let's what kind of uh, hair we got here. Let me change up the beard as well. Change it to something that, that way I can kind of get a better picture. I think I'm gonna go with like a standard beard. Beard like that, yeah. Go with like green eyes. Oh, this is, okay, you can like click on like, it's not just the toggle, you're full on like, you want to do a mix of, uh, kind of 
trying to see. There's like a little box. If you guys can see, there's a tiny, tiny box. But it's not perfect. You can actually move it over between the two. I thought if you put it in the middle, it would kind of combine them, but it doesn't seem like it does. All right, so let's go black hair. Black hair and beard. Now we are going to be a druid. So let's see, what's a good druid hairstyle? I mean, four is okay. It's pretty standard. Uh, eight. I feel like nine is actually not bad. That's kind of a, I feel like he's got a druid look to it. 14. What's that one? 15. About seven, uh, 17 looks like, I don't know. I might honestly go with nine. Right there. I feel like that's very much a, uh, or he might be a druid looking guy. Eyes, what kind of, okay, so we can full on change the eyes. Also, let's change the eyebrows. Eye color. Is there a way to change the color of the eyebrows? <laughs> Sonny, I'm, uh, I've been a druid for years now. Um, there's not many options for eyebrows. That's fine. <laughs> Sonny! Is that the, I'm trying to like see, is that like black? That's kind of gray. That's brown. All right, whatever. That's, I guess, as dark as we're getting it for the hair. Okay, eyes. Sorry, got distracted. 14 seems okay. 17. 20, oh my God, his eyes are wide open. There's a lot of eyes. Three. Thirteen. I might just go with like 14. I mean, like how often are you going to see the guy's eyes? Unless if you really zoom up in there. Nose. I feel like nose is okay, but I'll look anyways. Oh, now, now I see the nose. Holy, there's so many. Uh, one. Yeah, I think one's good. Like a default. Lips. There's 14 different styles of lips. They really gave you a ton of customization here. One is good. Facial detail. Okay, you can get into the classic... Eye slash skin color. Okay, they have all types of skin colors here. We'll go probably like a little bit of a tan. Um, let's see. The weird thing is, like, these aren't really in order. I feel like that's a strong tan. Okay, wait. Is that this one? Is that what I started with? I bet you that's probably what we started with. How about how about that? Not that dark. There we go. I think that's good. Yeah, I think that one's good right there. All right, let me click randomize. 
I th I think we're good here. Okay, fill in your name. Uh, so it looks like alignment. What is this? So it's lawful, neutral, neutral, good, neutral, and chaotic neutral. Uh, we'll go neutral, good, I guess. Lawful, neutral, neutral, good. Yes. Uh, your appearance has uh, been randomized to so your star. Click on the arrow. Next option, feature. Okay. So you can add a first name and a last name. Pick an alignment you want for your character. Go neutral good, I guess. Like I said. Is Cassus available? Let's find out. The name is already taken. Rip. Uh, Cassus plays. Go Cassus plays. And there we are, 26 minutes later, after doing all the customization, we have our first character in Dungeons and Dragons Online. All right, let's go ahead and load in. Welcome to Dungeons and Dragons Online. The entire party shares all the quest objectives. Keep an eye out for optional objectives. They will grant you additional XP. We're loading into our very first character. We'll see how this goes. Hoping for the best. You find yourself waking on a shore of Flotsam. Memories of a large white dragon striking your ship come flooding back. Whoa. Okay. Let's see if I can bump oh, this up awake. a bit. Oi, you ain't undead, are you? Whoa, dude, you're tiny. Uh, walk close by and left click on Jeets to talk to him. Oi, were you on that ship that got attacked by the dragon? You're the first survivor I found. Sailor's been washing up for hours. Are you looking for survivors or looting bodies? Don't go blaming a poor rogue for making a living. Besides, I don't want nothing from you. You got nothing worth taking. Yes, I seem to have misplaced my belongings. It's right dangerous to walk around without a blade. From my good deed of the day, I can give you something back at the camp. All right, lead the way. If what Follow the me. halfling said was true, no one but you made it to the island alive. Follow me. It may be worth following this rogue for now. Come on, follow me. I'm following. Okay. Remember that you can Here left click are. on a character so to meet. You want a weapon or not? To start a conversation. Oh. Ah, uh, well, that depends on what you want. Uh, what am I good at? Uh oh. Can I see what I'm okay at? Or what I can equip? Whoa. What is this? Freshly picked berries. Level 1 druid material. Lesser heart of wood. Longsword, quarterstaff, light, crossbow, and bolts. Longbow. Can I use a longbow? I don't know. Am I able to... Am I proficient? Uh. Is there a way of seeing? Uh-oh. Probably should have looked. If I press C, here we go. Beats. Uh, proficiencies. Martial art weapons. Scimitar. Got any scimitars here? Oh, here we go. Club, dagger, dart, quarterstaff, sickle, unarmed. I'll take the quarterstaff, I guess. Go ahead. Give it a few swings. Press I to open your inventory and left click on your weapon to equip it. Guessing that's it. As you take hold of the weapon, feeling its balance, you can't help but notice this Jeets has more he wants to say. Hmm. Uh, okay, so we have a tiny mini map up here. We also have some information, tavern regeneration. All right, I'm just going to kind of let the game teach me or show me the way. 
What task do you have for me? Here's the deal. Selmas is waiting for the cave up in the path. Go and tell her we'll be along shortly just as soon as we finish all the salvage on the beach. Let's get that's it. Give it a message to Selmas. Salimus is at the grotto. Salimus. Tell her to keep her knickers on. Open the map. Okay. Got that. Press M to open. Whoops. Head up there now. Bring the map. Okay. Map node icons in the map can guide you to your yellow door. Can I zoom in on the map? Oh my god. A yellow door indicates a dungeon for which you have a quest. I feel like the UI is very small. Is there a way of increasing the UI, I wonder? Uh, aspect ratio? Oh. I don't want to mess too much with that. Window resolution. I don't know if this is going to make it worse or better. Let's find out. Okay. Aspect ratio. Eight times. Advanced graphics. Okay, here we go. So most of my settings are on high or as high as they can go. Rush rate auto. Let's go 144. Yes. Sync with refresh rate. Uh, that's fine. UI settings. Here we go. Floating text size. Uh, the floating text size is actually pretty good. The rest of the UI. Whoop, delay. Holy. Uh. Gameplay? Auto attack on double click. Okay, I guess over time we'll figure that out. All right, let's uh, help the cleric in Selimus. Selimus is in the grotto. Selimus. I shall show you the way. All right, lead the way. Break the barrels. Hold the left mouse button to swing your weapon. What? Well, uh, 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 I dropped something. Some copper pieces. Don't mind if I do. Go ahead and look around. I'm here when you're ready to go to Selimus. Hold down right click button to look up and down. What happens if I right click? Uh, does right click like target it? Left click also swings. Here we are. Go inside and speak with Salimus. I Left click to enter the Jeeps. space. Uh, the rune center of the grotto. Uh, click OK on the select difficulty panel to play the dungeon. So, okay, this is where you select the difficulty grotto. Duration, medium, enter. This grotto is damp, dark, and forbidding. Is this Salimus, oh. the cleric you were sent to find? He hopes so. Kyber are you? Who are you? That's a better question. Identify yourself. I am the druid Cassus plays. A dragon attacked my ship and I alone survived. I then met your companions who asked me to protect you until they arrive. Until they arrive is Jeet's strifling through the wreckage. I'll wring his little throat until his tongue falls out. Oh, if you're willing to help me, I don't fancy waiting around with, for those idiots anymore. What exactly are you doing in these caves? I've been hired to clear this cave. All right, I'm ready. Let's go. First, I shall surround us with a protection spell. Her spell temporarily prevents you from dying, though you can still suffer injuries. Okay. This effect will wear off when you leave these caves. Now, let's be about it. Let's be about it. A gate. There must be a way to open it. Try up that ladder. 
I'll it is kind of cool that there is uh, a trying to sneak out. A voice, voice lines, voice acting for the characters. Not every interaction, but some of them. Hit the space bar to jump on top of the rock ledges. Hold the right mouse button to see where you're going. You hear the shuffling and wheezing of some creature coming from the corridor ahead. Hold your left mouse button to swing your weapon at it. The corroded lever at the rear of this corridor most likely controls the gate where the cleric, Salimus, is waiting. Good job, but no time to dawdle. We come to assist you. Onward to glory. Salimus isn't too honked at me. Thanks for putting in the good word. Don't you worry, Salimus. I'm here to watch your behind now. All right. Use the, the lever to open the door. Is oppressive. So Wagen are behind this door. I'll take point. Talbron, cover me with your spells. Jeets, kill anything that tries to flank us. Hold you, on, guys. Open is the there door. a way of uh, adding a second? Is that my my abilities here? They uh, they don't really look normal. Okay. Wait, maybe it's that plus. Ah, okay. So that's how you add a second tree. Now, what happens if I press one? I would add that one on top of the other. And what happens if I move that there? Okay, good. Good, very good. What is this? Uh, wild em empathy duration. Activate this ability over here at large. Uh, effectively mesmerizing them. All wolf companion okay I don't know you guys just show me the way wherever we're headed I'll, I'll even leave it here I'll leave it as is destroy the evil what it's something. empty oi where's the bloody sawagin look the door closed behind us it would be logical to assume Aww. it's literally a wolf pup Trap! There are more of them up there. Stay alert. Purge the wicked! They're coming down. Sawagin wretches, are you scared of me? Come down and fight. The righteous smite you. Immune. Uh, Goodberry transmutes natural matter around the Goodberries. Summon nature's ally. Such is the fate of evil. Now, let's find a way out of here. Summon Grey Wolf. Wait, what is the difference? Can't pick this. Anyone see? Oh, Curious. one's a I just I see. stepped on something. Good work. I see a key down there. Who's up for a swim? One's a pet. Hydrophobia mean anything to you? Revive Wolf Companion, okay. Drop that there. I have no idea what these berries are yet. Uh, bluff. Allows you to bluff certain NPCs, draw monsters away from the group. I can't swim in this armor. For the flame's sake, someone go down there. Searching. No idea what I'm doing. I can't swim in this armor. 
find the key for the chamber. Someone go down there. Hold right, uh, right mouse button. There we go. There's you the key. Grab the silver key. Time to swim for the surface. I knew you'd come in, Andy. This way. Apparently, nobody else can swim except for me. You've unlocked the door. Okay. I'm weary. Let's take a moment to rest. Ha! I still got plenty of stamina. I can go all night long. Why don't you scout ahead then? Just don't get yourself in trouble. Now you're talking. I'll take a little peek. So we have a if gray wolf resting, and, go and scout ahead with Jeets. And a wolf pet. Why does it look so scared though? And then now I have wild empathy activated this ability to lower an animal's or beast's aggression, effectively mesmerizing them. Oh. Do these do damage? Using a rest shrine with a glowing moon restores hit points and spell points. After a shrine is used, direction shrine restaurant. Okay, I see. Uh, it takes five minutes to recharge dungeon on higher difficulty settings. Take longer. Left click the moon to use it. Some doors can be selected right by a right click. You can open these doors by walking up to one and left clicking on it. Hold space bar. When underwater, be sure to monitor your breath. Okay. Crikey. Crikey. Ask Jeets to disarm the trap. You can, if you have a rogue or artificer in your party, you can ask him to disarm the trap for you. I'll wait for you to disable it. Go ahead, you got this. It was no match for yours truly. You can open the door now. Okay, I hope so. Using. Proceed to the rear cave. You two having fun? It's time for us to go. The high priestess should be up ahead. The onus for much suffering rests squarely upon her slimy webbed hands. There she is. Ugh, I can't abide this blasphemy any. Ugh, I can't abide this. Ugh, I can't that's abide that's this that's blasphemy any. Right, we'll open the door. Right, open the door. Prepare yourself. Ready? Go. <laughs> okay. So apparently, if you tap E, it it, it uh, chats with them. I'm finding out. Play the high priestess and her guards. According to our employer, there's a secret passage around here somewhere leading to Korthos. You boys look for it. Is this a chest? I you found a treasure chest? Energies around the shrine. Ooh. Let Salimus do her thing. You can re-roll loot. Care of the important stuff. The treasure. Okay. Loot all. Is that all stuff I can equip? Uh, what is this? Start leather armor? Okay. And then a ring of water breathing. Starter rags. Oh, that's the... Okay. Why is it... Wow, it actually takes time to... To equip your armor. Okay. Uh, wooden shield. I don't think... Wait, can I still use my staff? No, I can't. If I take the shield, I can't use the staff. Lesser heart. What does it do? Okay. Anything else? My rogue senses are tingling. There's something fishy in there. Start searching. You feel a stiff draft from somewhere in this room. Perhaps the hidden If you think there's a hidden door in a nearby, here. stand close to it and use your search skill. I searched the Found room. The secret passage? Go on, open it then. 
I open the secret passage door. Brilliant! Tidy lashes and pints up the wazoo! Here I come! We're almost done here. The way out is up ahead. But first, I want to reward you for your assistance. Ah. Please, come speak with me. Gladly. We've made it, Cassus plays. Uh, the door ahead takes you to, out to the village, but before we go, I want to give you something from my stash, and thanks for your assistance, me and my fellows this day. Selamas, may you walk, you always walk the righteous path, Cassus, and the holy flame look kindly upon your play, your days and deeds. Oh my god, I can't even read. Whoa. Select any one item and choose your reward. Uh... Do you have any? Well, my pet is like freaking out. What am I really good at? Proficiencies. Scimitar. Do you have any scimitars? You have a sickle. Say if I hover over something I can't equip, will it tell me? Uh, attack penalty minus 20. Is it because I'm not proficient with these? Simple weapon proficiency? Yeah, I think so. So you can still equip them, but uh, it's not going to be useful. The sickle. Okay, that's why. The sickle is like that. Cool, cool. All right, I'll take it then. Ember sickle, sure. Equip your new weapon in your inventory. Drag the alternate weapon into the hotbar to quickly switch between them. Okay, here we go. Corthos Village. Let's see what we got here. Usually peaceful has been besieged by Stepping a force of Stepping out of, of the evil. grotto, you find yourself in Corthos Village. The Sahuagin have threatened this place for generations. Judging from how it looks now, the Sahuagin are winning. However, some hopeful souls still hold out for help to arrive. What is this? Uh, daily dice. Okay. Quest ch uh, chalices. NPCs with glowing chalice above their head have tasks for you. Okay. New equipment. I uh, better get your new equipment and armor. You need to press I. Open your inventory. Okay. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be the it for this episode. If you guys did enjoy it, uh, you know, leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.